Where say why chicken thigh, and we hatch a lot of chicks. We've been getting healthy hatches from our incubator, the Farm Innovators Pro Series Model 4250. But lately, all of our clutches have had at least one hatchling with spraggle leg. Spraggle leg is a deformity of the chick's legs and feet that make it difficult for it to walk or stand. A chick who has spraggle leg will have one or both legs splayed out to the side. They may also have curled feet or toes. It's possible to correct when the chick is newly hatched. Watch until the end of this video to see the splint I made to correct the spraggle leg on this little chick, and also look for the link to a spraggle leg tutorial in the description. Spraggle leg can be caused by many different things, including fluctuations in the humidity level during incubation. For years, we've read about dry incubation and how this method may raise the hatch rate and reduce the occurrence of spraggle leg in chicks. So we decided to give it a try and compare it to the traditional wet incubation method. We designated one of our incubators for a dry incubation and the other one for a traditional wet incubation. During dry incubation, water isn't added to the incubator between days 0 through 18 unless the ambient humidity drops below 15%. During wet incubation, the humidity is maintained at 55% for the first 18 days. In both incubation methods, the humidity is raised to between 65 and 75% on day 18. We prepared both incubators the typical way by sanitizing and then running the incubator for a full 24 hours to ensure it maintained stable temperature. But how can I make this dry hatch experience a true experiment when it's like every single egg is a variable? And it's March here in Vermont, which means that these eggs will be incubated during the cold season. I can expect these eggs to have a lower hatchability than eggs incubated during the warm season. So we did our best making two clutches of 21 eggs as similar as possible. In each clutch, there were about 7 eggs that were between 5 and 7 days old, 7 eggs that were between 3 and 4 days old, and 7 eggs that were laid within the last 48 hours. For the next 18 days, we monitored the ambient humidity in the dry incubator, which stayed around 21%, and we maintained the humidity in the wet incubator to stay at about 55%. On day 10, all 42 eggs were candled, and they were either all growing or they had shells that were too dark to candle, so they all made it back into the incubator. Both the dry incubation and the wet incubation began with the first hatchling arriving on day 19. It's typical for us to have an olive egger early bird who hatches a full day earlier than the rest of its hatchmates. And soon the rest of the clutch all jumped into action, pipping, zipping, and popping out between days 20 and 24. By day 24, there was no more activity in either incubator, but personally, we like to keep it going for a few more days. We'll start our comparisons of our dry incubation versus wet incubation by tallying up the chicks hatched from each clutch. The dry incubation had a better hatch rate of 76% as compared with the wet incubation hatch rate of 67%. Out of the 21 eggs set in each incubator, 16 hatched from the dry incubation method and 14 hatched from the wet incubation method. We were very happy with our fresh batch of 30 new chicks. But the best outcome of all is that there were no chicks with spraggle leg from the dry incubation one chick from the wet incubation had spraggle leg. And as for that spraggle leg chick, I corrected it by making a simple hobble out of vet wrap and a straw. First, I cut the straw to span the ideal space between the chick's legs and wrapped it in vet wrap. Then I created vet wrap cuffs for the chick's legs. Then I cut thin strips of vet wrap to hold the hobble in place. It's normal for chicks to take some time getting used to walking in a hobble. Make adjustments as needed. This little chick hated this hobble and wanted to pick it off, but it was able to access food and water and get around with its flock mates. So I attended to it daily and kept the hobble in place for two days. And here's that little chick just four days after hatch walking free of spraggle leg. So the dry incubation method worked better for us than the traditional wet incubation method. We had a higher hatch rate and healthier hatchlings. And so I'll be using the dry incubation method from now on. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to Say Why Chicken Thigh 